everyone. And uh, Jack, if you didn't hear it, just had a question about, is there a better term than ego or self? And I said, well, selfing is a more, a more uh, accurate description. Yes. See, there is no ego or self. There's no things in a sense. So the way when I hear the word ego, how what it triggers in me is something, a thing called an ego. That's yeah. And the same thing with obviously self. Self is um, in the head is synonymous with a body. So I hear a self, I see a thing. Yes. So this is the term selfing is much cleaner because it's an activity that is used or to reinforce or imply that there's a thing yeah it's not giving a direct name to the thing itself it's the activity that implies a thing and i believe all things are implied let's say yes so there's also native american languages where there's no nouns well yes and the 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 in the movement the verb it means that everything is always in transition, that there is nothing fixed. Yes, that's, yeah. well, that's, yeah, there's a, a number of uh, tribes and, and things have uh, languages without nouns, yeah. yes? Yeah, but see, the thing is, if you've been, if you've grown with, up with a uh, language without, uh, with nouns, when you hear a language without nouns, it's probably going to trigger the feeling of a noun. <laughs> <laughs> so, so because you can remember what you thought you knew by hearing the new stuff with as the activity of the head yes see this is the dilemma that's why in recovery we have a statement self-knowledge avails us nothing which is a pretty harsh statement in a way you would think knowledge would have value yeah but self-knowledge avails us nothing so knowledge in a way claimed by the noun, especially knowledge about the noun claimed by the noun doesn't avail the noun anything. Really. Yes, because it's just reinforcing more noun when the relief would be the recognition of, let's say, verbing or the way we go about the recognition of verbing is not nouning. So you would see the nouning is not you and you'd find out the verbing. Yeah, I'm not a real believer in uh, in including the noun and trying and talk trying to talk the noun into seeing itself as a verb. I don't think that goes anywhere. Seriously, I don't think so. So uh, that's why I believe uh, non-duality arose from a sense of duality. Yeah, so an opposite had to appear. To negate the one thing because the one thing it's sort of like when you bring uh like uh what they did in australia they had trouble in the sugar canes you know from these certain bugs so they brought the uh uh the horn toad or something this big freaking toad that was very it eats a lot but nothing else eats the toad so now the whole country is run with these giant toads i forgot the name of them based on their idea of a solution the solutions become a huge problem this is yeah. what happens yeah, the and the yeah all these things yeah, yeah. they yeah. always do it because yeah. those are demonstrations of a failed system really we don't have we don't notice intended unintended consequences but they weren't intended or unintended they were a natural progression we just aren't keep keyed into a lot of natural progression. We see things from a very skewered position. So we always get caught with our pants down with our, this is the solution. And then it kills that bug, but then the thing itself is it's cane toad, they're called, huge. People I know in Australia, they drive around with uh, golf clubs. Yeah. And when they see them whack, they just whack them. They just get out and it's just, just nothing. They're like poisonous to most things. Nothing can stop them. They're just everywhere on the road and everywhere. So, yeah, this is sort of. Uh, are you there, Mike? You're starting to fall like I do. You're sinking down. Yeah, you're going down. I was ready to throw the preserver out. He's going down. So, 
This is a good uh, question because selfing, the way, the reason why we use self quite a lot is because of the AA terminology. So self is a pointer to that which has defeated us, yes? So, so we sometimes talk in that context, but my feeling is it's selfing, which is a mental activity or a mental verbing, yeah? And that selfing, if you're listening to it, it leads to a, an imagining ourselves as a noun, really. Yeah. So let's say if we're nothing, no thing, and here in this dreaming, no thing can manifest. Yeah. It hears this little swan song, and it takes itself to be a thing. Yeah. What What's the closest thing? Oh, this this thing. So yeah. And now this thing becomes the bulletin board for all the shit that the that's being claimed and represented by this noun. Yeah, so doer, thinker, feeler, taster, toucher, haver, loser. Yes, it's, it tends to uh, acquire a lot of attributes and qualities it doesn't really have. Yeah, it may be able to express, but it doesn't have them. Yes, yeah, yeah. So selfing was, uh, it, to me, works in a way because uh, when there's worrying about next week, that can be construed as selfie because what it's doing is it's attempting to imply there's a you that's worrying about next week. Yeah. So the selfing gets over, it gets over important about like a miscellaneous thing because the miscellaneous thing isn't, doesn't really matter. It's, it's ability to reinforce the now matters. Yeah. So a lot of people obsess over a lot of shit that's really, they, they know it's not even point, you know, there's not much point to it, but the head just does it. But because the head is doing something with that, the obsession with self is the reinforcing of self, yeah. See, if you're not something, it has to be made all day. Yeah, for something that isn't so to appear, it has to be made as if it's appearing all day. So the head has a lot, a lot to do with that. That's most of its job. So people obsess over this idea of self to really to reinforce the idea of self. There aren't people, but there's an obsession, yes, with this idea of self. So selfing I like very much. Because if you see selfing, all right, because uh, here's worrying about next week. The selfing is it's you that's worrying about next week. There's a, it's like an imaginary uh, impression, but has a real sense for us, yeah? So yeah, worrying about next week would be fine. Me worrying about next week may not be fine, yeah? So where does the meaning to, of worrying about next week come from? Not from worrying about next week, but who is it or what is it that's worrying about next week? So there's a shift of meaning. So if, if anything could come up after to imply there was before, that, therefore the head comes up with everything and anything comes up with ingrained. It's sort of like going to see Die Hard 12. You know, you've seen every Die Hard movie. You pretty much know it sucks, the premise, and yet you're still there because, because it's sending it, you know, a Bruce Willis is getting a check. So this idea of a Paul is getting a check from the claiming of I'm worrying about next week, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Yeah. So to me, selfie. It's a long, that was a long uh, breath of uh, answer, but I don't like the term ego because when people are sharing about it, they say they have an ego. And then some people say they lost an ego. I'm more concerned with that feeling of who is it that had it and who is it that believes they lost it. That to me is the sense of self concerning ego. Yeah. So the sense of self, the state, the mental activity is claiming ego. And now it's using it to reinforce the one who has the ego or the one who wants to lose the ego or the one did who did lose the ego, but it came back or whatever story is going to be. You know, it's sort of like that Nickelodeon thing, whatever it turns out, it's just like you had it, you lost it, it's back, I want it to go. Yes, there's all these reactions that keep ding, 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 hitting the cell phone. Yeah, it's like an addiction, really. And, uh, 
And as you know, most addictions don't come lesser as they go along. They get more pronounced or more frenetic or more engaged, yes? It doesn't usually start out with a bang and then just chill out, it usually gets worse. In other words, because you can, what you used to take to get you somewhere doesn't get you there. You gotta take it more and quicker. This is what happened like when I used to shoot coke, you would shoot the first shot if it was good, you know, the bell would ring like at the fucking, you know, amusement park, ding, and it would just reverberate. And if you were close to any water, you could turn it on, it would sound like a waterfall. I did it in sinks and bathrooms all over in San Francisco. You'd sit there with the water running. It was Niagara Falls. It was a great, it was a great sound effect. It was. So there you do, you get the whack. And then, all right, you're there for about a minute or two. And then first you check in, am I going to die <laughs> because your heart's going off? And you go, okay. And then suddenly the little, you know, dizzy beaver. <laughs> and got to do another shot. And then it gets less and less. So, yeah, maybe 15 minutes and 10 minutes. And then you shoot. Yeah, so it's very bad. Yeah. So this is this mental addiction. To make something seem to be so that isn't, it has to be making it a lot. So there's a lot of selfing going on. Yeah? Yeah. So so the idea, and also the idea of self is a sense. Yeah? It's not putting out, selfing is the activity. This, there's a sense of self. In other words, just like you have like my cat, when I'm sitting outside on the porch with it, and we're both sitting there, it gets a sense that the dog's coming before I do. You haven't seen the dog or anything, but it gets a sense and it gets up and it hides or it just walks away. And then the, the dog shows up, it's like Wile E. Coyote and the Roadrunner. It gets in, it's too late because the cat had a sense that the dog was coming. I didn't see it, it didn't see it, yeah. So the sense of self is, is, is a feeling that's produced, yes? Coming out of the mind of I am. So the I am is used, yes? That, that constant onness is used by the, and the, you know, the, the, like the parrots repeating all day, keeps saying, I am Paul, I am Paul, yeah? So the I am Paul, it's very fast, but the I am is there on, on, no, didn't have a start or a stop, starting point, stopping point. And then it's, there's this chirping, I am Paul, Paul, Paul. The mental state just keeps using this to verify it, what it's doing, yeah? So it's talking about this sense of self and then you have the sense of I am. And the I am now gives, really is used to give meaning to the I was and I will be. Yeah, yeah, it's a, you watch it, you can see it. It's like an addiction, yeah? And yet it's not you that's addicted. This is the good news. Because this is why I feel a lot of people don't really want to hear a lot of shit because it's just too much more burden, yeah? They already feel shitty enough for what they think they do. And then they get this thing, you've been selfing all day? Fuck, <laughs> yes, you, what? I'm the one. <laughs> so this is what used to happen when I heard uh, great, great descriptions of the indescribable. And then you say, oh, you're all love and everything is unbelievable. And then you would look at your day and you'd go, wait a minute. And what's the constant in both of them? <laughs> so I must have done this. Yeah, this is the thing with the Course in Miracles. The, the inherent guilt they talk about isn't inherent. It's the guilt of believing you separated from God. Yeah. I mean, you made a big boo-boo. <laughs> I separated from God. And you know, uh, I don't want to face up to that. So I'm just going to make a fucking world that I can have, I can dump all my guilt on. And here I'll have people that are worse than me. So that will give me a better look. Yes. So I will blame all these other fuckers to try to disguise the real blame I feel for splitting or separating from God. Isn't that insane? Hey, how are you, man? So, so, so saddled with this, yes, 
this is the beauty of what they call the atonement in the, in the course, which is nothing happened. <laughs> There's nothing, you aren't a particle of God that got a stick up its butt and split <laughs> from God and now is suffering the consequences of hell and purgatory. No, nothing happened. <laughs> it's just been dreaming, a dreaming of separation and a dreaming of loss and a dreaming of this. It doesn't mean that it doesn't feel like it's real because what's dreaming is reality. Yeah. <laughs> What's dreaming is reality. Reality is dreaming. Yeah. What illusion could fool reality other than one it's in cahoots with, really? So the head is, you know, what we are is dreaming this idea of what we're not. Yeah. And it's running away, but it hasn't changed anything. It didn't go anywhere. No cities were built. No fucking scars were left. No karma was, it was, it's just, it's just like when you go to sleep at, at night, everything that, you know, the Etch-A-Sketch gets erased completely, basically. You wake up and it's the same room, the same person, the same this, but really when in that deep sleep, it was, nothing was here. It was all, there was no, oh, I don't want to get up. In, there's no up in the morning. <laughs> it's, you're just out completely. And that's where you get regenerated and then, you know, and then your wheel spin all day and then you get back and there's a what and you know the head would love to have the story i got infused with light but it doesn't get infused with light yeah we are light it's actually the thing that's letting all the fucking it's the one that's running the big electrical bill up because it's <laughs> spending interest and attention on tons of shit. yeah seriously <laughs> so yeah, selfing. I hope that was clear. <laughs> That's why I don't like the term ego. To me, the idea of ego is an objectification of self. And I don't believe there's a subjective self, so I don't want to hear an objectification about it. <laughs> I don't. Yes, you see? The objectification of self, ego, would reinforces there's something that had the ego. I don't see that to be true. Yeah. It's either verbs or nouns. If you throw one or two nouns in, that's duality. Yeah. It's either, in that sense, it's either all verbing, no noun, or all noun, and no verbing. So basically, I see the verbing yeah, is really the basis of what's happening and the mental state extracts from the claiming of it, extracts this idea of a noun and then presents that as the story and has, it has the media, it has the K Pauls, it has the K John, formerly of J-O-D, but not anymore, no John of God. And it has the K Chris, yeah? So it just feeds the fucking thing in there and we all walk around as if we're a long lasting independent separate thing. And you're getting in my fucking way. And, you're, and, doing this, and you should be doing what I want you to do and all this stuff. And we constantly get confronted with a sort of powerlessness that doesn't seem to lead to a recognition, you know? It just keeps regrouping at all times, yeah? So this is what it says in AA. Hey, you realized uh, you realized uh, your whole life is unmanageable, but your so your answer to that observation is, but if I only could manage better, if I only manage better, it's going to work out. So no matter how much evidence, it just overrides it with like a false hope. Yeah, and I don't believe truly this idea of self. Uh, cannot get it's a non-self. It's just impossible. So self can't get out of self. So yes, that's my little take on it at the moment. Yeah, that's why I don't like the term ego. And it's a sense of self. There's no self. There's a sense of self produced by a, a devotion or an ignorant devotion to the repetitiveness of the selfing.
No. Hearing that you're a noun and ruminating that you're a noun who's the doer of the verbs and seeing all this information, what you shouldn't have done and all this shit, shit what you should have done gives this thing a, a, a field day to produce an aspect of itself called the policeman. Yeah. And the policeman can go up in rank where it's like the chief. Yes. And those are the, the, when the policeman takes over, that's what riles people up to kill other people <laughs> from the policeman's yeah. aspect. Yes. Yeah. If they feel like they have a right to put a squash to the thief. Yeah. So uh, we have uh, Mia, the, the harbinger of great news, especially about chocolate and stuff. We gave the bars already. So yeah. Anyone else? Jack, is that all right? That was great, Paul. Thank you. You see it though, what we're saying? Yes. If you let in, if you leave room for one noun, there's going to be a lot more. Yes. Yes. And remember, yeah. there is no self, but it, there's a production of a sense of self. And that's one of the mental activities. Yes. And how does it go about that? Selfing. And what the hell is selfing? Is the activity that goes with the claiming of the mental state of what's happening. So all the verbing is noticed and observed and the mental state claims it and uses it to write a story and reinforce a story about noun and verb. This is why non-duality showed up to be a negation of duality. There was no non-duality topic. There wouldn't be a non-duality topic unless there was a duality event. So the duality event needs to be negated and so that you get, a, you don't even get placed in that position. You never left that position. You now see a new, and you're not seeing it through bifocals. You're not go trying to change this. You're just taking off the glasses you've been looking for. Yes. Yeah. What can may help you to recognize they're not your eyes and they are glasses is non-duality. Satsangs, the understanding of non-duality, may finally move you to check your eyes and you'll see there's some metal and some glass and you have some glasses on and what would be the next response taking them off? Yeah, instead of co constantly trying to correct these lenses of duality, I want to see the one through bifocals, it doesn't work. All you'll have is a conception of some idea called one, yes? But if you could just feel the reality of them, and maybe there's a possibility, hey, I'm not this, then you see anew. And what one of the first things you see are the glasses. <laughs> yeah, what? What? <laughs> yeah. So now this brings about an understanding about this. Yeah. And then you see this was misunderstanding. Yeah. Not through this, but through this. You're now seeing why there was a misunderstanding. It wasn't you that misunderstood. Part of the misunderstanding is a you. Yes, it throws it in there. So you see it. And then I believe you don't have to do anything else. Now, maybe you will see as a you, you'll have to do something. I don't know, maybe go to satsangs, maybe you do this, uh, who knows? But for me, it was the last answer and it was very disarming because I felt like how many times do I have to get caught with my pants down to realize this whole, you know, fucking idea of having a belt is it's not working. So fucking let the pants fall off and then just walk around, you know, without like a toolkit of spirit, you know, you know, special, you know, skillful means and using them at every moment. We, you know, just please, equanimity, you know, no, you just fucking wow. lost all interest in that. And you just walk around and you have a day or a day as you, and then you go to sleep. And I'm not, of course, one of the liberties of this in, in the action figure world is I'm not killing people. Yes, you know what I mean? I'm not sitting where trying to devise your demise. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care enough. 
to think about you in a spiteful manner. <laughs> I don't, I don't even, I just go, can't get it up anymore, so to speak. Yeah, I just, fuck it, it's just, you know, just move on. <laughs> it's going to be forgotten, isn't it? You're probably the only one that's trying to remember it. Speed of the freeways, forgetting, everything else is forgetting it. You're, it's you're just you with this gale force of coming and going, trying to hold on to it. Perhaps there's an easy, softer way. Yes, Jesus Christ. When someone says, uh, you know, uh, like beautiful, beautiful people. Yeah, to me, they're like gazelles. I don't want to ride a gazelle. I like to see them. You know, but I don't want to, you know, capture a gazelle because I didn't have to feed it. And fucking it's not appropriate for where I live, you know. So I enjoy the gazelle as it runs by. It doesn't, oh, you know, I have to have it. No, I realize everything, there's a payoff and a cost. And I'm, I don't want to pay the cost. So let the payoff go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So... It used to surprise me when I'd be talking to someone in AA and I'd go home and maybe watch like X-Files or something and then go to sleep. And then they, I'd get a call from them from jail in the morning and they went to Richmond, they got some crack. They, oh, by the way, your car got impounded, Paul, the one I borrowed. I thought you were going to go home. Well, you know, the whole thing happens. I'm like, wow, it's amazing. <laughs> I thought, I just thought the dude went home, just like, because I went home. But no, he took, he went over the Richmond Bridge and just went off. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have that in me. Yeah. I can be let off the leash. I'm not going to leave the yard. <laughs> I'm not. I just, I'm not going to, you know, chew the neighbor's couch or anything. It's fucking just grazing. So, yeah. All right, I guess that was a very long answer to whatever we were talking about. <laughs> Selfing. But you have it, you've gotten it, right, Mike? I've shared this for years. It's the spirit of the share. You have to feel it after a while. It's not the words. The words don't mean much without the spirit or without that sense of it getting conveyed. The words are, you're missing the point in a, in a in a way, you can capture the word and he may miss the spirit. Yeah. So I know this. I can see it working through Zoom. You know, there's an energy that happens. That's the point. Yes. You get tattooed, 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 tattooed. After a while, you don't need the tattoo. It bleeds out from it. You know, it shows up mm -hmm. on its own. And it's always been there. You just had covered it up with other stuff. It's like this famous place in a. Turkey, uh, in Istanbul, it was, uh, there's a great blue mosque, which is very famous. And then I think it's called the Sophia, isn't that far away. And the Sophia was a Muslim uh, temple for thousands of years, or hundreds and hundreds of years. And then they were cleaning the tiles and some of them fell off and it was a Christian one underneath. It was from it was first century uh, Christianity. They fucking blew their minds. They took all, you know, the Muslim, all those tiles, and it was a whole fucking Christian church. Yeah. Well, now, was it there at the whole, all the time? Yes. Was it noticed? No. But was it there? Yes. Yeah. This is exactly like the message. Is it here now? Yes. Is it being noticed? I don't know. That's hopefully what satsang does. There's noticing going on, so maybe you could just direct the noticing. Oh, wait a minute. Instead of, because a lot of our noticing obviously has been tunnel vision in the self-centeredness. And, and the blinders have really extended. If they're not just two inches, it's like way, you know, you're like seeing that way. So the noticing would maybe have to question that which is stopping it from noticing, which is a pretty good start, yeah? And then suddenly, when the message is, is uh, conveyed, there's a noticing of it. 
and maybe it's like followed by an aha or something. Now you're on to it. Yes. Yeah. And then who would want to describe what's going to happen or what gets noticed? I'd much rather have people find out in their own progression here in this place. Yeah. As they're traveling, I feel they're going to sense a lot of things they weren't sensing before. Yeah. And instead of having, you know, they'll have a Just find out, yeah, that's all. To me, my role in a weird way is like, uh, what's his name? God, it's John, John who came before that got his head cut off. So he was introducing people to the idea of Jesus. Yeah, John the, John the whatever? John the Baptist. So John the Baptist was like the mailman. And then, you know, you were there to find out Christ consciousness, yes? He was just giving you the mail. He was giving you the invitation. Look what it got him. He got his head cut off, but hey, he, did, he delivered the goods, he did his job, and then basically you don't hear much about him, right? Yeah. But without hearing him, nobody was probably gonna meet Jesus at that time, yeah? Because John the Baptist brought the news. Hey, you gotta check out this dude, and <laughs> say, yeah? And then he just, they don't say much at all about him, do they? but he did his job. So in a way, satsang is just the same thing. Why would you want to hear someone describe what you are? Wouldn't you want to find out about it? Yeah. Wouldn't it sort of take away the real fun if someone said, okay, I'm going to describe exactly what it's like? You know, because it's never going to be exactly what it's described like. It's just going to do what it does but you'll know the source, you will have the sense of it. Yeah. And then that intimacy is ironclad. It's not like you're wearing understanding like a garment and if it, the wind's strong enough, it's gonna blow off. No, it's like ironclad, there's a, there's a certainty with it, yes? Because you've checked it out, it's, you've seen it, you've sensed it and everything and enough's enough, yeah? So I just, that's why when people ask me stuff, I just find out, yeah, I mean, that's the joy. The guy did it, I don't think John the Baptist went with you. I probably, he probably didn't see Christ much as a guy. He probably saw him a few times and then he just split and did his job and said, you go, you go, yeah. He didn't become his big buddy, he didn't need to. Yeah, he had the Christ consciousness, whatever you want to call it. And said, oh, this guy has it. His job is to sort of maybe show it to you. My job is to show him to you. There you go. There you go. See the Simon complete? <laughs> Cut my head off. His head had already been gone. So what was the point you anyway? He had lost his you head. Not tell anybody about you. <laughs> his head was his head was cut off before he got there. So yeah. So yeah. I like I love your wife. And she's uh, she knows how to use satsa. Yeah, yeah. She goes into a deep sleep. She goes into a deep sleep. Now, if I start seeing things coming out, like from the horror movies, <laughs> hundreds of bugs. Oh, yeah. She's possessed. All right. Hey, anyone there have any uh, question? Yes, Bruce has his hand up. This doesn't feel. We're just we're at the we're at the Zen Bitch Lab board, corporate board, and we're having a meeting now. <laughs> now, this should explain the condition we're in already. There's our security division. Uh, out to, they're out to sleep. This is, this, is our, this is our consultant here, this one. Decisions are made by her. Here we are. Yeah. Our corporate, uh, our corporate, <laughs> our quarter of the quarter, what the our trimester. Time. Next week, we'll all be headless. <laughs> so yeah, headless. that's it. This is the Zen Bislap board meeting. <laughs> Only happens once a year. Yes. <laughs> I haven't been voted out <laughs> so far. <laughs> yeah. uh, we were worried about John a God, but then 
his namesake went down bad <laughs> in Brazil. So he's out of the running. So, all right. So uh, anyone have a yeah. Hi, Paul. Hmm? It's Bruce. Hi. Hey, Bruce. Can you hear me? I can. I'm trying to find you. Who is it, Bruce? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I see you. Uh, I happened to watch the movie The Shack last the sh night. The shack? the shack? The Shack. I think many have heard about the book. Um, yeah, yeah the the note the noticing in the beginning you, you shared a um like there's there's nothing to be said to anyone if the, you know it, um and you know in the pro, I guess the progressing of this uh, you know the thoughts appear and recognized you know as they are and then there's 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 uh, like an emotion along with that a bodily sensation let's say uh which perhaps may have not been felt openly you know that playing of god wanting to judge every you know this uh, um mental judging of everything the recognition or noticing of that uh yeah i mean many have said it, it it has been hell, um, you know, but, you know, seeing others um, without a sense of judgment, man, it just opens up reality. I don't know. Thanks. I don't know. Thanks, Bruce. A coming here has been a saving grace. Well, hopefully uh, you won't wait for that moment without a sense of judgment. You'll have a freedom even with a sense of judgment because the sense of judgment isn't you doing anything. Yeah. Yeah, the identification yeah. with the emotional part aspect of it, um, you know, that recognition, but, you know, feeling the emotions. Yes. Know. Well, don't you really... Uh, we always feel the emotions. A lot of times there's a, a wanting to abort the situation quicker. And sometimes uh, it feels like everything wants its five minutes on the stage sometimes. If you keep trying to get it, you know, rush it off, it's going to keep repeating or keep coming back, I think. But when you let it give its, you know, its little presentation, like a TED talk, yeah. You know, okay. And then, yes, something else happens. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's like, and you feel like uh, the head loves to abort these missions, but you already feel it. You felt the emotion before you had an opinion about it, obviously. Yeah. It's like, there's no shame, sh no shame to be had about it. You, you I often, I think, refer to that sense of guilt too, that, per, you know, that personalized or selfing of guilt. Or blame, you know, that recognition, you know, judgment in others, you know, I'm pointing fingers and seeing that, you know, it's pointing back at me and then it's, there's no me to point back at. That extra, extra move or, you know. And there's no it's, me that you're pointing at either. It's none of my doing is the biggest thing about all this. This is none of my doing. I, Jeez. Yeah. And it which leaves me like in a helpless, powerless uh but, but that's where the power is. Uh, power of yeah. grace, I think, comes from. Is this, that is my, this is the point of it all, is the idea of uh, volition or somehow being the one that is leaning this way or doing it is, is persistent and stubborn. And it really, I feel, drives a lot of people's... Uh, uh, willingness to see stuff away. Once you take away the idea that you're the doer of this stuff, then uh, usually there can be a clear assessment of the stuff. Yeah, seriously. And then the quietness of the mind, there's nothing to be said in words about anything. Well, there you go. Yeah, and then you know, and, and you'll say a lot of words. 
Yeah, that's why not? That's a hell of it. Always, oh, there's no nothing to, and then the same thing goes yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here, there's two sides of the coin. The boomerang comes back. Yeah. This is, what, yeah. this is the movement here. So you're constantly, when there's a sense of being a singular, you know, citadel standing alone, there'll be neighbors moving in. <laughs> That's the way it goes. And so this is, you start laughing about it. And uh, things are worn a lot better when they're not taken so seriously. Yeah. Mike. Yeah. And I don't see how you can take it less seriously. Wedded to this idea of you or the doer of it or whatever. I just don't see it. Yeah. I do not <laughs> believe many of us are up for the task of battling thoughts to the point of no thoughts or uh, watching every judgment until we don't have any judgment. I don't see it. Yeah, so why not just like see that there's no one who has the judgment because the judgments are a drag to keep seeing when you don't want, you want to be a someone who doesn't have judgments. They tend to ruin your whole story. So why not give up that story? You know, it's like writing a book and you realize, oh, it was going to be a great epic. No, it sucks. Let's make it a romantic. Well, just change its direction on chapter three and go with it. Yeah. So, you know, the head's going to be like a popcorn maker. It's going to judge and shit like that. And now you're not, you're not uh, swallowing that, that pill that's being implied. That's all. Yeah. I, I feel I'm like being put in, uh, satsang is like in, in marinade, marinating and in satsang. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or like getting dunked into a dye, D-Y-E. After a while, you come up, and that there's a point where there's no need for dunking unless you like it, because the die is set. That's all. Okay. Thanks. And uh, yeah. Thanks, See, everyone. If you, were, if you, if there, if there was an act of of setting a die, and yet every day you were in water, yeah. So there would be something that was resisting or or putting an obstacle to that die getting set. Then you need satsang, you know, a couple of times a week. So you keep overriding the water, yeah. And then there's a while that you get water repellent. The message gets water repellent, yeah. And then waterproof, yes, yeah. So it's not like. You don't have to deny water or whatever, you know. Now you can swim in the water without losing whatever you think you may lose by being worldly or whatever. Yes? Yeah. Because you, most of us are not up to the task. We're not. I don't see many saints here, really. I don't see, you know, I just don't see it. I don't. I mean, I, I, you know, I imagine myself to be, I wanted to be a Chinese person when I was young. Because I was into Tai Chi and you know living up on the hill. <laughs> it's uh, I I like you know I like Tempur-Pedics. I like sleeping <laughs> on a fur bed. I'm not into you know. I mean, I'm just not gonna you know flagellate. No, it's just so even no. uh, recognizing. <laughs> Yeah. Running around bare naked, that's all. <laughs> you might as well have an easing comfort now. Yeah. And see what that motivates. Maybe it won't motivate much. Yeah. My whole day I'm looking towards a, another latte, basically. That's it. I'm feeling I'm going to be pretty successful. Especially yeah, lots of things. Who buys me a latte every week is here this week. So I'm even feeling more confident that I'm going to have a latte. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times, seeing that the thoughts are not what's happening right now, and you know the habit setting in of recognize of the you know the recognizing that. Yeah. Like, wait a minute. Yeah. 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 You're not going to get rid of the thoughts. So hey, plan two. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Plan two in this is to move the camera farther back. 
not focus it and concentrate it farther ahead. Move it back. And maybe all that seems to be demanded of you here may not be demanded if you're back here. And that's my faith. Yeah, it's a disarming message. You don't get called to arms. It's every, you, what? More gets revealed and you see, hey, you know, I was using the Buddha to seek the Buddha. You know, <laughs> okay. Self can't get out of self. All right. Yeah. And then more you go back, the less is needed. Because it's not like you go back, you need to go back. You're believing you left. Yeah. You believe you left. And the only way is I have to retrace my steps, which is just faith in the fucking failed system. Yeah. This is just, just giving you an out. Yeah. You didn't buy the ticket, you know, sometimes because I spent the money, I'm going on that trip. You have a feeling you should know. I bought the ticket, I'm going. No, you can get a full refund. <laughs> you never, like, if you never <laughs> left, you don't have to get back. Exactly, you don't have to, yeah, yeah. And it's all this really, it's this. It's not this, yeah, if you can see it, it's this, yeah. So more of you get seen, yeah, yeah. This is like, wow, I'm incredibly clear. <laughs> and then this is what? <laughs> Oops. So, so I'm the one, so I'm the one standing. <laughs> so am I the one standing in front of the camera when, when I'm behind the camera looking? Am I seeing myself in front of the camera? Yes, you're not seeing yourself. You're seeing something. It's an activity. It's not you. Right, right, right. You are the seeing of what you're not. You're not what you're seeing. <laughs> you are the seeing of what you're not. You are not what you're seeing. You are seeing awareness of what you're not. You're not that which you're aware of. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll, I'll, thank you very much. Put it under someone else. Yeah. So you get this principle and after a while of thinking it has to be applied to everything, you'll see its application over everything. You don't have to apply it. It's just hanging above. See, with the tunnel vision, it's like this and also like this. All it's hanging above. You can just see you can see this from a principle instead of trying to see the principle from this. You can see this activities from the principle. So when you see the activities, you'll see the pattern of them. So there's 50, let's say 50 what, 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 but there's only four patterns of the 50 what, 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 what. All right, fuck the 50, look at the four. See, and then the four gets broken down, and then there's one or two patterns, which is duality, the idea, is there. So this, this too is hatching all the more difference, all the more speciality, all the more, 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 yes? So here, here, proliferation, here, no propagation. Here, proliferation, no propagation. So you're seeing, you're seeing it. Yeah. And then let the chips fall where they may. But I, I humbly believe you'll be able to enjoy peace of mind because you won't be far from it. And your mind, the relative mental activity, doesn't have to be in such a special place or a condition to have a peace of mind able to be enjoyed. You can have a narrative going down like a cascade and still be at peace. Just laying there because you're what's before. And you you have to seemingly be in the act of being identified with what's after to have the after conditions be dominant. If you're if you're not, if you are all that before, it overrides the after conditions. So the after conditions don't have to get destroyed and stopped. You can be at peace while your head's going on. I am, I'm like that in the morning. I wake up, Amelia does not get up. I usually up first. So I'm just laying there, you know, and the head's doing its thing and I'm just laying there. And, and I even start 
uh, snoring, and I go, and I'm, and she, she thinks I'm awake, sleep, but I'm awake. I'm just whistling to the snoring, and I'm just sitting, and the head's going, do, 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 talking about what, you know, I, that leather bag, I want to put a rivet in or something, and just going on, and that's not having a huge effect on the piece. It isn't. Yes? I mean, just do all the steps after the concrete has solidified, are all the steps affecting the concrete? Not much. Yeah, your giant heavy footprint ain't leaving a fucking footprint. Yes, because now it's not in a, an amorphous situation where it's taking other impressions in. You're, you're, you're abiding on a new basis that's solid. So a lot of wear and tear can happen on it, but it's not leaving a mark on it. And it's not a condition. It's the absolute re relationship of what you are with magical conditions going on in dreaming. It's, that's the, that is the relationship to what is and what ain't. What ain't doesn't leave, doesn't leave a mark on what is. Yeah. Oh, oh, I've been so, you know, whatever. <laughs> really? Yeah. These are... Facts. What allows you to be clear of confusion? I'm, I'm so confused. And then you break it down incredibly clearly. <laughs> so the clarity that you are isn't confused. It's now seeing the confusion and you're given an incredible description of I'm confused, which is super clear. Yeah, because it's not you. The awareness is clear, as clear as it always is. Yeah. Now it can get scrambled through this little, like, you know, when uh, you have that thing, uh, telephone or something, you whisper to somebody something, and by the time it gets around, it's a whole different story. Yeah. Sort of like that. The light can get bounced off and retracted, and then we can live like what I think was Plato, who they were looking at the shadows on the wall, thinking that was the reality, having no idea what was casting it all. Yes, you can go that way also. But that idea of what was casting it was true, no matter what you were believing or not. Yeah, yeah. So this is what happens. You come, I believe non-duality just shakes up uh, these foundations of misunderstandings and see what happens when a lot of the shit falls. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel it's sound and reliable. It's, to me, it's the last answer in all this time, and I'm emphasizing time, a last answer would be incredibly valuable. And it was the last answer concerning this topic, which is a pretty broad topic, you know, transcendence, origination, whatever. Uh, and most of it was just a huge loss of interest in all the topics that were under this umbrella of who am I or whatever. And then that's where the real joy lied. The real liberation was from the need to be liberated. I am not that which needs to be liberated. I'm not. Yeah. And that's really the, where the joy came from. The joy came from all these chores and tasks are not truly being helpful. I think Ramana put it out there. Hey, if this activity of the mental state, having you take yourself to be a thing, so the existence now thinks it's a thing that's existing, yeah? If this is the case, and when he stated it, it sounded like this is the case in most cases, then your spiritual practices themselves are going to be used to reinforce the non-existent thing. How can they destroy it? I came to that conclusion. Yeah. So what, what happens? You know, yeah, the Titanic is there, but the decks can get moved around and it can be a different trip. Even though the Titanic is going to sink, you can travel lighter. <laughs> so, Moving the deck, you know, the, the deck, you know, the deck chairs of the Titanic can be an incredible improvement. 
<laughs> Again, even though it doesn't change the fact yeah, you're going to die, yeah. but I mean, traveling light is pretty fucking cool. Mm. I feel. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, there's not much, there's not a chain of supply. I don't have to go through eight fucking things to get it. It's readily available right now with no requirement necessary. I just have to give up, not opinions, but the one who has the opinions, because it's gonna be much more difficult to try to stay the one who has opinions and give up opinions. I don't believe it can work. I don't, because this is full of opinions. This is how it sees things, yes? So I saw that as a pointless endeavor, and I wasn't getting clear enough direction concerning that in where I was practicing didn't seem to be a, an important point, which t became the most important point to me. Yeah. And so when I finally heard it, and then I saw Ramana say it in a lot of different ways and in the renditions of his teachings by other people who wrote about him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just rang a huge bell that put an end to a lot of stuff. It just said, that's it. Yeah. I'm open if it's as an extension of that's it as something else, but that's it, the door's been open, nothing's come in to change it, yeah? So I come here, why ever, uh, whatever. Yeah. This was just like doing recovery meetings and it just switched. The only people that were bummed out were the people who thought they were getting a recovery meeting and then it turned into satsang. <laughs> it had its natural progression here. <laughs> So, anyone else have uh, anything there? No, their hands up right now. Well, I think we've been successful. We have someone sleeping here, and we have Gary sleeping on the Zoom. <laughs> Gary is sleeping. Two oh, down. He is. Look at that. Three more to go. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> I think Al will be the third person. Al from Vegas. He's ready. I can see it. Come on, Al. Come on. Put your head down. It's been a rough day. He hasn't gone to sleep yet. It's from Vegas. He's just. I don't remember seeing Gary go to sleep before. That's cute. Huh? I don't remember Gary going to sleep before. That's very cute. I know it's great. You can see the message finally getting us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. The, it's like the Lego blocks are doing themselves before he wakes up. <laughs> All right. So, anyone else, or we're gonna end? I think. Um. That's three o'clock here. It's only two. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Oh, it's three o'clock here. It's three o'clock here. It's only two o'clock. It's only two o'clock oh, yeah. out there. I know. <laughs> moving the room out of the room. It's two <laughs> so anyone, anyone else? Uh, hey, Vlad, how are you, Vlad? I want to say hello to my d deep friend, Vlad. Hey, hey Paul, I'm good. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Good. good. Is... Always great to see you, Vlad. Oh, you got a hand from Andrew. A hand from Andrew? Yeah. All right. Hi, Andrew. Right, Andrew. Hey, Pat. Hey, they're, they're trading the Zen bitch slap stock. <laughs> yeah, it's going down quickly. All right. Um, so right Andrew. Mostly, hey, um, my question is mostly around uh, letting go. And um, there's no one to let go. go. Um, uh -oh. When it feels like there's someone to let go, uh, good to say. Regroup quickly. Okay. Yes. But but like what? When it feels like there's something or someone to let go of, um, I've been praying. I've been self inquiring. Um, I feel like why not pray if there's an infinite intelligence that can let go of the illusion then i mean is yeah. that what are your thoughts yeah, on prayers this, for this process? we don't have any warnings about doing anything do whatever you want what do you think works do it yeah yeah in that case the ends justify the mean the end justifies the means yes 
Yes. You'll either feel better that the prayer worked or you'll realize uh, there was no oh. need to pray. You're going to learn one way or the other. It's fine. Yeah. See, if I really feel like I needed to do something, I would do it. So if you really feel like you need to let go, then I would pray to something to help you let go. And then down the road, maybe you can look at uh, letting go of the idea of the someone who can't let go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because there is a point where you'll end and then you'll see the, the value of there's no one that's holding on. So there's no need to let go. Ultimately, that's where it goes. Yeah. But right now in time, if you feel like you need to do something, I would do it. Yeah. Mm. And then hopefully you'll be able to respond when you don't feel, need to do something, because a lot of people keep doing stuff they don't need to do anymore. Yeah, we had a perfect example of that in the recovery meeting a year or so ago where we were talking about the third step prayer of please relieve us of the bondage of self is a prayer we, we, sh we obviously direct to the higher power, yes? So this power, please relieve us of the bondage of self. And so a man was doing that every day. And then at the talk, he realized that he was in the relief of the bondage of self and him still, still saying it was uh, not allowing him to recognize that how he was in the effect of relief from the bondage of self. So now the prayer was being a disservice because it was taking his eye off the of the present ball and putting into a future wish. Yes? So there you mm. go. At one point it's working and then it wasn't working. That's because the condition he was praying for, he was readily available in. Yes? Yeah. We're not saying pray or don't pray. We're saying, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, see what's before the prayer see what's before not praying yeah because there'll be a claiming of being the one who's not praying and the, there'll be a claiming of being the one who's praying so see that yeah so it's, they seem to be completely exactly opposite pray or not pray but there'll be a singularity in the noun that's doing both of them i would go for that yes no it feels like there's something that wants to really get this and then yeah. sometimes it feels like there's there's a lack of motivation there's an exhaustion or just feeling fed up with trying to do all like you said the tool belt like there's sometimes a, a exhaustion and frustration with doing all the the, the spiritual things the meditation the self-inquiry all this stuff um but i noticed that that I think sometimes that lack of motivation is also maybe holding on to the old or being afraid to explore this. Um, so how do you know for sure if it's exhaustion and you're ready to just let go or if it's just like fear of going well, further? Take a chance and see. Yeah. If you're in such good hands, I think they, it allows you to make mistakes. Yeah. Without... Uh, excessive punishment that's what the head does <laughs> yeah so that's how you find out you find out by hit or miss yes mm. yeah so what happens if you just hey give yourself a break you'll probably see the sky doesn't fall down this giant <laughs> foot from heaven doesn't step on you that you're all right you're coming under a we're living under an incredible mental tyranny. Yes. Uh, and it'll, it has you going both ways. Just fucking unbelievable. So sometimes you got to just say, hey, I'm just fucking, I don't want to do anything today. And then you'll see. Yeah. The sky does not fall and shit like that. And maybe you'll see that something's playing God concerning God in your head. Yeah. Yeah, the head is playing God with your pursuit of God. Of course it does. And um, yeah, but do whatever you feel you need to do. I mean, I did certain things 
from the first day I entered recovery for like some of them for a couple of years. And then one day I stopped and then never did them again because what didn't seem to be there uh, was discovered to always be there. And therefore I didn't need to go through a procedure to sort of enter what I was already in. Yeah, so I was already in that which I wanted to arrive at, which means I have to buy a ticket, da, da, da. oh yes, seat 43, yes, all the formality, but now I see I'm already there, so yes, yeah. And if, let's say I drink too much caffeine, which I'm hoping to do today, <laughs> and I get a little buzzed out, the body, just take a couple of breaths and uh, see that there's still a loving of extreme fucking conditions <laughs> that still goes on. <laughs> and it's not me and shit like that. Yeah. 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 You're gonna <laughs> probably be, you're gonna probably, Andrew, <laughs> You're probably going to be the hardest thing on you that you've ever met, that head, yes? Yeah. You've got to look at who's whipping who and shit. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Sometimes it feels it. like they're, like... I, I resonate with what you're saying, and I feel sometimes that I don't know. I, I resonate with what you're saying. And I'm also noticing that there's like, like I want to just be able to just let go and just not. Yes. Well, just, if you, just, you know, just to be. I'm sh you have a way of life, right? Way of life. Yeah. Yeah. Design for living. Sure. Recovery. Um, yeah. Yeah. All In right. Way. Oh, there you go. That will help you along the way. Yeah, it doesn't matter when you arrive at where you already are, if you took a long train ride or you rode a wave, it doesn't fucking matter. But here in the dreaming, it's gonna have to look like you took a train or rode a wave. So there you go. So you have that. But, uh, and also hopefully you work with some people and listen to their suggestions when you're going a little too crazy. Because I had a guy I worked with once in a, uh, I had to tell him not to take inventories because that's all he fucking did. And uh, to me, I could mm -hmm. see it was a huge obsession with self and he wasn't enjoying the recovery that he was in. So, yeah. And I said, listen, if you want to keep working with me, you got to stop writing <laughs> because it's just gone off. Or I don't want to hear every intention you had <laughs> throughout the day. That's such you're missing the forest from the trees so to speak yes so yeah. just see, most of us who enter recovery are extreme versions of characters and uh you know just right. know that that extremeness wasn't just in drug taking it can be in spirituality and other things yeah yeah hmm. all right well thank you paul hey, yeah bro and any uh yeah, I have nothing against meditation or anything. I try to screw with it a little because uh, a lot of people have given a lot of meaning to meditation. So to get to the idea of the person, you wanna fuck with the meditation so that you see the noun before the meditator in all of its empty glory, yeah? And because I want to, I remember in hindsight that I had no idea that before I even hit the meditation pillow, the head had me as a meditator. Yeah. Yeah. It blew my mind in hindsight. And so 13 hours of meditating with that as the first injection, it's tough because the 13 hours don't change the first injection. They actually end up reinforcing it. So I left as a huge meditator. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. so meditation, all these things are beautiful, but you have to see that something else is trying to use the same activities for its own advantage. And it, I would say and I don't want that to happen. I, I well, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. See, does it see? 
it's, it's happening or not happening doesn't change anything. Yeah, because you can see it's not happening to you or you're not the one that's happening it. Yes, that's the point. It's going to happen. Something is, go, something is going to run side by side a little bit off because it's not present, it's in time, and it's going to claim whatever's going on. And it's going to present you as that which it's claiming. So I know we don't want that to happen, but it's going to happen because you're powerless over it because you're not at the controls. Yeah, it's a mental activity. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. This is the thing, this idea of volition and I'm doing stuff when I'm applied to the wrong topic just constantly produces unmanageability. This is about surrender. Yeah, I would love it not to happen, but <laughs> this is what the head does. Yeah, if you're in a, an epiphany, when it finally comes out of the knockout and gets back in the ring, the first punch it throws is, I'm having an epiphany. <laughs> then the epiphany seems to stop. Yeah, it's just the way it goes, bro. This is more important to see it than to hope that it changes. Yeah. Yeah, because if you see it, you won't be the origin of it, yeah? You won't be the cause of it if you see it. If you keep trying to look from it from afar, thinking you know it, it's working its wonders. But if you see it, you'll see there's you are not a cause. You're not the origin. Well, absolutely you are, but in this dreaming, you're not the origin. You're not the doer, let's say. Yes. So it will give the, the meaning you're giving or is given to all these things. I wish they would stop and stuff like that is really coming from the idea of being the doer of it. Yeah. Or the, not the doer of it and wanting to do it. Yeah. When you lose interest in that, you'll see they aren't that as important as you thought. Yeah. How do you say, Paul, that you're not, you're not the one seeking liberation? No, yeah, of course not. I love yes, you're you're relieved of the need to be liberated because obviously what what one needs one. to be liberated isn't you. Yes, yeah, you see, but you got to do what you got to do where you're at. These <laughs> ideas aren't meant to be a measuring stick and then used to beat yourself up with. They're gonna be like a prophetic uh, message, and you're gonna live it sooner or later. Yes, and when you get the living message, it will verify these satsangs. Yeah, you don't need to try to verify the satsangs. Do what you feel is what you need to do. Yes, yeah. I had to do a lot of shit. I was fucked up, seemingly. Yeah, I came in AA. If I would have heard sats non-duality the first time, I probably would have been loaded three days later. So, luckily, you know, yeah, so. I, Andrew, I'm really for you, bro. We're in your corner. Yes? Thank you, man. Yeah, you have my mm -hmm. ultimate support. Appreciate it. Seriously. Yeah. I would love to see people traveling lighter. And uh, yeah, and nothing can stop the, if there's a will, there's a way. And uh the interest can get perverted, diverted, but if you stay the course, all things reveal themselves. Yeah? Yeah. All right, anyone else there? Yeah, Greg has his hand up. Who? Greg Shenderuk. All right, and anyone who's been asleep and now has woken up can't ask a question. So Gary, you're out of it. You're, uh, there's no uh, questions today. All right, so who's, who's Greg? Yeah. Oh, great. Yes. Hey, Paul. Uh, oh, man. Um, so I, I, I'm trying to segue off the last gentleman that was talking, uh, Andrew. Um, I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> That's the cop. Yeah, I got to go. No, but I, I, so, you know, a year ago, uh, I was listening to your sad songs and, and uh, uh, a year ago tomorrow, I was diagnosed with COVID and I was really sick. They wanted to put me in the hospital. I said, oh no, you can't put me in the hospital. 
because in two days I have an appointment with a bone marrow transplant doctor. I'm in my last phases of um, cancer and uh, I want to live. And, uh, and I was really scared. I was having trouble breathing. I didn't want to go in the hospital. I wanted to talk to this doctor. Anyways, it ended up being a miserable mess. And uh, they told me that I had to find enough people to take care of me for 100 days. And so I reached out to the fellowship, couldn't find enough people to help out, you know, and I, I you know, I, everybody's off the hook. It's, you know, people are busy. I just couldn't find enough people. So I had to call them back and tell them, I said, uh, you know, they asked, what are you going to do? And I said, I'm not going to do the bone marrow transplant. And they go, well, you might die. And I go, what? I go, I guess I'm going to have to accept that because, you know, uh, uh, I, I don't know what else I can do. So I went through this, this phase for a bit where I was really having a hard time letting go because my head was just screaming at me uh, about dying and about, you know, all, all these stories, right? And then finally I said, well, what if I somehow wasn't attached to these stories and I just did what I felt I had to do if I wasn't sick. I don't know if that makes sense to what Andrew was talking about. And if this is another part of ego. We lost you oh, a little. I'm sorry, I accidentally muted you, Greg. <laughs> can, can you hear us? Can you unmute? I think you muted him again. Here, I'm, I'm was, good. Sorry about that. So, <laughs> so, so I turned around and I, because I didn't know what to do, I just said, you know what? I'm going to go to work. I'm going to start acting like I'm okay. Yeah. And of course, my the volume got turned up a lot, and these stories, and um, and then all my commiserating family and friends were really against my ideas. <laughs> and uh, uh, but. But I want to say, I, you know, I was six thousand dollars in debt back then. I was eight thousand by the time I finally started to work again. Um, I have way more than that in the bank. A year later, and I've been just announced that I'm cancer free. And I oh. and I really don't know what I did. There was just something, you know, inside saying, "Don't do this bone marrow transplant." You already know what to do. Just do it and stop listening to these stories. I don't know if that's, you yes. know, the act of not selfing or or what. What do you think? <laughs> yes, you got a clear, you got clear, orderly direction. Yeah. yeah. The radio isn't what's uh, playing the music. It it allows whatever music comes in to play. Yes. So. I've heard, I've had this quite a lot, what you're sharing in, in bigger and smaller situations. The bigger would be they were about me. <laughs> no, <laughs> smaller situations. And then I recognized something after having an example of it quite a lot, where my mental logic tells me, you know, it's multiple choice, it's only A, B, or C, and then I just refuse to take the test and I just follow something and it usually has panned out quite a lot. Yeah. So yeah. after a while, that unsuspecting, let's say, inner resource is now suspected and trusted. Yes. And so sometimes I don't understand why I don't do something. And then uh, I find by not doing it, it works itself out and then everything is cleared up. Like I have this, it's, this seems like a minor thing compared to what you're speaking of, but uh, <laughs> a bunion on my foot or something. So, and I know I can't stand CVS in those places, but I just don't want to get a bunion oil. Yeah, <laughs> just refuse to go. And so this has been for a while and now it's clearing up. It was growing like it seemed to be getting uh, more dead skin. Now it's going back and just getting better on its own. And uh, just, I had a stubbornness. I'm not going to fucking go to CVS, <laughs> you know, or any of them, Rite Aid or whatever, because I don't like those spaces anyway. But, and I just followed along and now it's clearing up on its own. And this is un not unusual. Yes. And, that's the term and the same thing when I was young, 
What? Your fault hmm? A fault onion. <laughs> yeah, fault onion. So I had this when I was in the hospital with a car accident. Uh, the doctors were telling me terrible forecasts of what it was going to be like to be Paul unless Paul does something. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, thank God uh, I just didn't have faith in them. I had faith in something else. And a lot of times I would just, you know, they first they wanted to uh, uh, just cut my leg off, you know. And so luckily my sister wouldn't sign because I was in a coma. But when I came out of the coma, they presented it again. Hey, there's nothing we can do. We got to cut your leg off. I said, wait a minute. Is there any, is there any other options? And so they presented one and I didn't trust those people. So then the guy that these guys were frontmen for, the Chinese doctor showed up and he explained what he was going to try to do. And I had a feeling, I said, all right, let's go for that. And I'd been able to keep the leg for 37 years, 38 years. So uh, these messages weren't based on my condition. What my condition would do was sometimes not hear the message but the message would come through yeah and now i'm more in the habit of hearing it and listening to it so it seems to be much more obvious but it wasn't it was just there was a lot of scrambling going on i wasn't getting it clear because of the head yeah so yeah and i and i think you're an example of exactly that yeah something had a plan for you it wasn't what their plan was you followed it and it's worked out. I have someone here that did the same thing. My friend, our friend Tommy, he didn't listen to the authorities and he just stuck by what he believed and he's recovered from cancer. Yes. So, awesome. yeah. I don't yeah. think, I think, uh, you know, I feel that's an incredible demonstration that you could build a church on, as they said, like St. Peter. Yes. Build the church on that. Seriously. You know what I mean? Faith. Yeah, it's, it, it's interesting how, uh, you know, the old idea or the old old relationship I had with self was kept trying to represent itself. Now in the current situation, I and I literally I had to drown myself in other things like, you know, the, the, the law of assumption and the wish fulfilled, you know, just uh, and people are going like, what are you doing? You know, you need to go back to doing some writing and and you need to go back to doing more meetings and helping more alcoholics. And they said, well, if it presents itself, I have no problem with that. But that's not what's being presented. What's being presented is that I just got to just do simple life stuff and focus on that. And, and, um, and, that, and that's what ended up ultimately bringing me to, to this place I'm in now. And, and, um, your your uh your zooms there's a lot of times i'm on i'm just listening in the background have, have, have helped it's kind of like uh, uh uh just bounces me off the walls and, and brings me in the place that that i i i know i i'm always at you talk about you talk about the one that's really watching the one that's really seeing needs nothing wants nothing um is always available uh never not not there i mean like and um and and that's what I felt like was was speaking to me. And and uh uh it was pretty clear. I, I didn't understand it obviously in the beginning, but it but I found myself kept being led to uh uh um this type of, of information like you're sharing. So uh yeah. I, everybody. Uh what is it? Uh you follow a drum, you know, uh, yeah. it may not be, uh, everyone may not be hearing it the same way, but there's a faith in what you're hearing. Yeah. And to me, I never understood anything. It was just, I'd see, I'd have a resistance to something that didn't seem to be worthy of resisting, but I'm not going to do it. And then things would work out. Yes. So, yeah. Thank you for that share, Greg. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Greg. And Paul, thank you for the for the COD, clear orderly direction.
clear. Oh, there you go. God, yes. <laughs> clear orderly direction. You can, you can cook it any way you want. <laughs> but you can't have it every way you want. No. <laughs> <laughs> It's cod. <laughs> All right, hey, I've been. Um, this is overtime. I'm going. It's three thirty now here. No, it's two thirty. Uh, so I'm going to say goodbye. Eh? First, hey, Greg, thank you for that share, and thank you for uh, infusing the whole group with it. Yes, it's good. Thank Mike, you. as always, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Don't go crazy on that mute button, Mike. Yeah, I'm gonna keep an eye on you. Uh, <laughs> there are more accidents. Uh, we got we got Alan uh, Mitchell, I think. Alan, nice to see you in there. You're in the void. Oh, you remember Mr. and Mrs. Void? They don't come anymore. They must have gone in completely. They were barely on the event horizon. They got sucked in. But it looks like Alan's looking from the void. Chris, as always, nice to see you. Yes. Al, Vegas. Nice to see you, Paul. See you, Al. <laughs> Vlad, as always, nice to see you, Vlad. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. John Connolly, very nice. Gary Clark, he's now very refreshed and awake. <laughs> yeah. Greg, again, thank you. Andrew, nice. thank you for your participation. Uh, yeah. Bruce, as always, yes. Here's Bruce and here's Andrew. It could have been, it's the future, it's the future Andrew and the past Bruce. That's pretty good. Yeah. We got Jack G. I always know Jack got it when the, the rocking sh chair stops. He's in a pause. <laughs> Johannes, nice to see you, my friend. We've been in this together for years. How the hell did this happen? Uh, Tariq from New Jersey. Every time it's Tariq, I remember Dover. Dover, Dover, New Jersey. <laughs> right near the parkway. <laughs> When we were growing up, we had a huge fear of uh, New Jersey State Troopers. <laughs> they were completely, they were known far and wide in the underground. Do not be carrying shit on the New Jersey Turnpike. <laughs> yeah, it was scary back then. David B. Nice to see you, Dave. Yep. We got uh, Giorgio, he's, he's going, he's taking a little nap there. He's in the Gary Clark uh, phase. Michael Sherman, as always, nice to see you. Tommy, Ireland. We got Mark N, Mark Nelson. Nice to see you, Mark. Mark, am I, uh, I'll try to talk to you later, Mark, or send you a message. Yeah. Appreciate it, yeah. thanks, Paul. Yeah. Thank Esther. As always, yep. Angie, yeah, there she is, cracking a smile. There she is. She's, a, she's the non-duality Mona Lisa. Yeah, <laughs> there she is. <laughs> Her eyes follow you wherever you are. <laughs> Sherry, Sherry, I think I have someone here that you may know. There's uh, Mia. Hi. <laughs> Thank you, nice Paul. To, nice to see you, Sherry. You're welcome. Susan K., I'm going to go get a latte on you in a minute. <laughs> Miranda, nice to see you. Uh, we got Senna. We got Oliver from Berlin. We got Holly. Uh, Miranda. I think, let's see who else is here. Got those folks. We've got, I think I covered everyone. Hey, thank you, everyone. We'll be back. Just go to Zen Bitch Slap. We have something going. Hey, Mike, did you put up that Mexico stuff? February? Yeah. Oh, good. We're going to have a little uh, weekend in Mexico uh, in February, I think, 3rd to the 6th. So, uh, yeah, I'll see everyone soon.